move to the next uh, topic, man, the next topic. So we've spoken about, right, there's been an incident in the UK, and I thought I'll speak about this. It's very relevant. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's cartoon had been shown at a school. Um, this is in a grammar school, I believe, in Batley, which is uh, northwest England. I, th I believe northwest Yorkshire. But so what had happened is in this school, the teacher had shown in a lesson the paintings, not the painting, the picture, the caricature that was, uh, I think it was the same Charlie Hebdo drawings, unless there were some other. And it's caused an entire uh, hoo-ha, as you can see, people, protesters turned up, the teacher is suspended. Um, there's an investigation going on. Um, the news are showing interviews from parents. They're showing them from other teachers, from parents speaking both sides of the arguments. What do we think about this? So first of all, there's the discussion of blasphemy. Okay, that's one thing. Then there's the understanding of the reaction and the consequences that's going on here in this particular school. And also, how should Muslims react? Okay. I have got, look, I've got detailed videos on blasphemy laws and things like this in Islam. You can see my videos on, uh, uh, you can see my videos on the case of Aisha Bibi in Pakistan. I do explain that there, that look, uh, that is not, right, that that is not something Islam condones. I've sh shown how all those ahadith, there ain't many anyway, they are all utterly weak. And the hadith that they use uh, for killing people that have done that are utterly unreliable. Okay, so that is, uh, I've got that detailed video out there. But why? what is this thing about painting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or drawing pictures about him? Now, I'll say a few words to give you an explanation. This is not what people actually think it is. So today there's actually a misconception. People think this is because we're not allowed to have statues of the Prophet because people might worship him. Now, although that too does kind of make some sense, but that's actually not the reason. <laughs> that's actually not the reason. Um, you'll be surprised that if you go back through Islamic um, literature, there were many, on many occasions, where people actually drew the Prophet. Muslims, they used to draw the Prophet. There's many Sirah books that were written in Farsi um, from like four, five hundred years ago that had the drawings of the Prophet in there by Muslims, done by Muslims. Many, I'm not just mean, I don't just mean one. If you look at the classical artwork, there's pictures of paintings of the baby Muhammad وسلم, being held by his mother Amina. Uh, anha. And these things, you'll, you'll find them right throughout. Uh, I mean, they, I'm not saying they were the norm. They weren't the norm, but they weren't uncommon either. They weren't like unfound. They did exist. In many Sufi circles, they existed, definitely. Um, they existed in the Shia circles commonly uh, because the Shia didn't really have an issue with the the paintings and pictures so hence they had pictures of the of the prophet they still have pictures of ali radiallahu an they have pictures of hussein pictures of hassan pictures of so these things existed in muslim culture for centuries like it's nothing new um so it's not so that's something just to clear because people think oh muslims have never done this muslims have actually been the ones who have been doing this right throughout if you look at even Sa'adi's books and all of these books, I'm sure you'll find them in there as well. People had drawn the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Right, so, so what is all of this about then? So this is about, really, it's by people like the Maliki Madhab. <laughs> you know, the irony is it's actually the Malikis, right? So the other Madhabs were never that harsh. You see, the Malikis had this thing that they were... The Prophet's honor was right up there. So they were really harsh if anybody disrespected the Prophet. 
Now, they had a principle which is found today in all the Maliki Fiqh books. If you go to Muhtasar Khalil, all these books, they have this uh, chapter, they have this section on how to honor the Prophet. So the Malikiyah used to say, and this is coming from Imam Malik, they used to say, you're not allowed to describe the Prophet in a way that has any nooks, that has any kind of derogatory aspect. The Malikiya said, you're not allowed to bring the Prophet in to defend your own cause. You know, like how I mentioned before, some people got upset that their scholar may have married an underage uh, girl and said, well, look, we didn't, he didn't, and we're going to justify it, and we're going to do these calculations, and we're going to show that, look, he didn't marry her, and maybe, and maybe he didn't. You know, maybe other people got it wrong. But people, and they're saying, look, because if you calculate this month, then she reached this, and then she was 18, and then she was like this, and this. But they won't do the same calculations when it comes to our prophet. They will just say, yeah, the prophet married a child. But to, for their scholars, they will say, yeah, you know, no, 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 look, I can, I can look, I can use this date. And on this date, she turned this age. And when the scholar had passed, she was so many years old. Now, if you backtrack, then that meant she was this, you know, she, and maybe she was, maybe. But, you know, don't you think you have more loyalty to our prophet who, his wife, when you showed the calculations with the age of Asma and you show this and when this verse was revealed, she was already this many years old. And doesn't that also add up like this, that she was in her late teens, like 18 or 19? Doesn't that also show that? But there you won't do it because that level of loyalty doesn't exist for the prophet. You know, it's not like this is why the, this is what used to really annoy the Malikia, you know, the Imam Malik's mother. Because they used to think, well, wh why do people not have this kind of loyalty to the Prophet wasallam? So, now in the Maliki Madhab, you had these principles. So the Malikiya used to say that you can't describe the Prophet in a way that is a nooks, okay, that is discrediting. Now to draw him, you see, by not knowing what he looked like, is by default to attribute, to misattribute to him. Because if I drew a picture of you and I said, this is you and it's not you, I've misattributed to you. So because the Malikiyah had a, an axi they had a kind of law in their books that it is impermissible to misattribute to the Prophet. Anything, a quality, a characteristic, anything. Even if you're doing it positively, it's, it's haram in the Maliki Madhab. So... Drawing a picture of him would always be a false representation of him because that picture definitely you don't know what the Prophet looked like. So the Malikia were the ones who were at the forefront of this, you know, from over a thousand years ago that they were like, you know, we don't want any because we don't want no misrepresentation or misattribution to the Prophet. So here this law kind of took root. Okay, and the Maliki, I admit they were very harsh in the past, some of them, on this issue. And I don't agree with their outcome, because in the past they would take it to things like capital punishment, even. But and I do disagree with that. But that was obviously that day and age, a thousand years ago, the kind of dark ages. But you see, the other madhabs didn't have this like that. They only took it from the Malikiya much later. Like they just like started quoting Qadi Yad and quoting Maliki scholars to say, look, oh, this is the rule. So today, when these people like in Pakistan quote that, oh, we should kill somebody who's blasphemed, what they're doing, they're just quoting Maliki sources. If you look at who they're quoting, they're quoting people like Qadi Yad, who are not Hanafis, because the Hanafi madhab never allowed that anyway, to start off with. So just to clarify, the issue was not about creating statues that people would worship or photos, or sorry, pictures that people would end up worshipping. It was based on having a misattribution to the Prophet, which the Malikis had stipulated in their madhab. The other madhabs were relaxed on it. Hence, they used to all in Central Asia, used to have pictures of the Prophet. It wasn't commonplace, but it wasn't uncommon either. If you find the old Farsi books, hundreds and hundreds of years old, about the seerah of the Prophet, they will most likely have a painting of the Prophet in there. So that's just to put that issue to bed. Now, 
okay, somebody could say, what about drawing with the intention to insult? Because what the Charlie Hebdo thing was doing was that they were drawing, uh, not to kind of say, well, like how the Sira books were just drawing a man or drawing a child. These people were drawing insulting images, like sexual images and so on. And and that I've got a whole detailed video on, on the Charlie Hebdo thing. And I do explain that, look, that's irresponsible um, because you are, you know, you're going to just offend. Like the only purpose of this is to offend. It's not really about freedom. It's about just the right to offend. And it's true that although freedoms exist, but yet we should have some civil of sensibilities between us. Yeah, We should kind of be a bit responsible uh, in how we do things rather than just doing flagrant, having flagrant actions with sole purpose is just to really rile up people. And as I've said before, the Muslim reaction really should be, I feel, not to get wound up. Okay, when people draw these insulting things, it is wrong. It does hurt us as Muslims. But we shouldn't kind of like, oh, kill them and do this and ah, uh, because look how that shows us as Muslims. Shows us as nothing but a mob. Okay, so... Sorry, just uh, a screen. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so that's what I would say. Now, as to having the right to protest and things like that, true, that is a that's still a fairly peaceful thing. I don't know the context and the reality of in what aspect the teacher was discussing that in 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 the Batley school, grammar school. Was he discussing it as a topic or was he saying, by the way, this is the Prophet Muhammad or Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Was he saying, oh, this is what had happened with the Charlie Hebdo thing? There were news reports that other teachers had already discussed that same Charlie Hebdo issue and even shown the pictures the year before. So why the outrage against just one teacher? And I feel that, look, as a non-Muslim, you know, I don't look, I. People are saying he should lose his job and things like this. I don't know because you need a, you have to understand that, look, the countries you live in and the rights people have, you know, people do have freedom of speech. They do have the right. If a person wants to make a video criticizing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has that right. As much as I don't like it, I have to accept he has the right to do it. People in the Prophet's lifetime had the right to criticize the Prophet. The Prophet never said to people, oh, oh, they're criticizing me, let's attack them. That's unacceptable. You see, that is the, it is the, 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 the kind of backbone of civilization that people can hurl criticisms. You understand? That's just, it is what it is. Like, and even if we don't like it. So I would feel that really people should, if there's a civil... There's a procedure to investigate what's happened. Fair enough. Was somebody just insulting? You know, like, let's say it's nothing to do with the class. What, why is somebody in a, I don't know, a lesson of geography insulting the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? This is, and that too to Muslim children, that is very highly insensitive and needs to be investigated. But if there was a discussion, they were discussing politics or discussing how current blasphemy works and showing this as an example then, you know, although I, I recognize the angle that people may say it's insensitive, but I feel if that's what the angle was, then, you know, it's it's that teacher. And maybe, OK, fair enough, people could have a word with him. But this is not really about blasphemy. Then, But that's my uh, thoughts on it. I thought I'd discuss it, but we definitely should not have a mob reaction. OK, utterly. That is under no circumstances. Um. Right. Okay. What is going on, people? Yo, Mufti, assalamu alaikum. You're doing it. You're doing it. It's the Colonel. All right, people. All right. Let me check on what the Facebook people are saying, man. What is saying? Uh, France is. Yeah, I've got a whole video on the France thing, and I do strongly disagree with the French. Uh, you know, kind of national reaction at that time, but you can watch that clip. Right. 
All right, what is going on? Yeah, uh, an area where Malikia are harsh. Yeah, they were very harsh on those issues. Uh, <laughs> right, so what is going on? A child born out of a haram relationship. What is the ruling of that? Some say that the father loses the right over his child.